So in this series, we continue with the substantive rights that are provided for under bilateral investment treaties and certain domestic legislation in respect of um, investment protection. So we're talking about here um, national treatment and mo the most favoured nation principle. So from a national treatment perspective, um, which is provided for in a number of BITs, uh, we're talking about an investor who invests in a particular jurisdiction and the requirement under the national treatment principle is that a foreign investor should not be treated less favorably than a domestic investor or a national. There is certain exceptions where obviously we look at like circumstances but in principle what it implies is that your treatment of your foreign in investors should not be different to your treatment of your nationals. Governments, obviously, as a sovereign state, you're entitled to, to ensure that prior to um, an investment being admitted, you can obviously set, set out certain requirements in respect of an investment. But once the investment is admitted and you then change your laws, a, a investor could most probably rely on the fact that you are now violating the national treatment obligations under a particular treaty that has been concluded. So if you're a South African investing in the DRC or Tanzania, which is within the SADC region, and you qualify as an investor, and your investment is a qualifying investment, and the particular governments in the DRC or in Tanzania treats you differently to what they treat their own nationals, there might be a basis to say that there is a violation of the SADC protocol. Uh, is particularly the, most, uh, the national treatment standard. So that is what we mean by national treatment uh, in principle. So it's also a very broad concept, but in principle that's what we mean. When we talk about most favoured nations, which is now the, the other principle, most favoured nation principle is essentially where we talk about two different foreign investors in a particular territory or jurisdiction that is admitted. So it implies that one foreign investor should not be treated better than another foreign investor. So you should be entitled to the same incentives, the same entitlements under the, that um, jurisdiction. However, it's important when we talk about uh, most favoured nation or MFN that you also look at the entire BIT that you intend to rely on because in some instances a state might exclude uh, certain incentives or, or measures that it provides to other foreign investors. So from a customs union perspective, from a tax perspective, it could uh, have a specific provision providing additional protections to other foreign nationals than it would provide to that particular foreign investor coming from a particular jurisdiction with which the host government has a BIT. So it's, 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 it's good to be mindful of that and make sure that you understand the particular provisions of the BIT holistically and not just in isolation with reference to one provision. So hopefully what uh, I've done is given you a good overview of what protection is available from a national treatment perspective and a most favoured nation perspective.